Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so next up we have Theorem 12. Um, again, I'm using Project Maths uh, website just like I did with Theorem 11. Um, and Theorem 12 states, let ABC be a triangle if the line T is parallel to BC and it cuts AB in the ratio M is to N, then it also cuts AC in the same ratio. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, there's our triangle ABC. Okay, our line T is parallel to the bottom of that triangle BC. And if that line T cuts AC, so it cuts the side AC into a ratio M is to N, like I've drawn on there, then it will also cut the side AC into the same ratio. All right, that's what the theorem states. It looks like it is true. It is true. And now you have to formally prove that that is the case. Uh, the ratio M in, is to N, that just means, for example, it, it's kind of like the general case. You could you could cut it into any size at all. So you can see now my M um, length is much longer than my N. I could, of course, try and have it somewhat even. Or I could put the line T down the bottom. So now my N side uh, or my N proportion of that line AB is much longer than the M piece. So that's why it's done with letters M and N and so on and so forth, because if you prove it for one case, you've proven it for um, any location for that line T and any ratio M is to N. Okay, so just like any other proof, um, I, I've broken it onto different pages, all taken off the Project Maths website, and we'll go through it. So the first um, heading in any formal proof is given. So what was given in, in in the question or in the theorem, we were given a triangle ABC. You can see that. Let me just delete off this. So you're given the triangle ABC. You're given the line T that's parallel to BC. And it's showing you that the line cuts AB at the point D. OK, so it's just calling that point on ABD and it's calling the point on ACE. OK, and in some cases, you would see M and N there, which is the ratio of the divisions of that line AB. And you're to prove um, in English, line T also cuts AC in the ratio M is to N. OK, I want to show that the length of that line is also M is to N. OK. Do we need any construction on this one? Um, yes, we do. Again, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Um, we do. We are going to cut A and B into segments. Okay, and the number of segments depends on the ratio M is to N. So in other words, if the ratio there is 5 is to 4, then I would cut this into 5 segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So M is something like 7, and up here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 as well. Okay, um, and that's just me roughly doing it. I think I forgot one here. It's probably 8 is to 7, but it doesn't really matter um, because it works for any of them. So divide A and B into M plus N equals segments. So the, for the purposes of you proving this, it doesn't really matter how many segments you put into each part put a few dots, put something manageable, um, just to show that you are dividing it up into segments. And this is a good line to have here because it shows that you understand M and N can have any number, um, a natural number. It'll be a whole positive number, um, but it can have any number. So it can be any number of divisions. So that's the construction that's needed for this proof. Okay, so we were here on the last slide. OK, so the proof then, line T cuts AB in the ratio M is to N at the point D. And it's just saying there where M and N are natural numbers. OK, so that basically is 
what was written up here. That's why I have the arrow here. You're just bringing line T into it. So line T cuts AB in the ratio M is to N at the point D. What does that do? Well, there are equally spaced points then all the way between B and D and between D and A. Okay, and you specifically chop it up so that the, the gaps or the divisions are equal. Okay, um, so it's saying then that um, D0 is the point B. So this one down here is D0. Then you go up a distance and you get to D1. That's the first division. You go up another distance and you get to D2, D3, D4, D5, all the way up. Okay, to this. So let me just take a minute now to explain what that terminology means because I think these two lines are the hardest ones to get into this proof and once you get your head wrapped around this proof um, then this actual theorem, uh, the proof of it is, is easy enough. Okay, so I'm going to pretend my ratio m, in, m is to n is 5 is to 4. Okay, so I would have d0 then being equal to b just like they have here. My d1 I'd have a D2, I'd have a D3, D4, and I would have a D5. Okay, um, because my divisions or my my M is 5. Okay, so what does this mean? So this is written for what we call the general case. Your DM at that stage, for my example, is D5, because I have 5 divisions. DM minus 1 would be take 1 away from 5, because we had picked m to be 5, so that's d4. Um, before that would be dm minus 2. This is dm minus 1. This is dm, and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's how you write in maths language the general case. And you'd have seen this in sequence and series quite a bit as well, um, where we reference um, ones that come before it as d m minus 1 for example. Okay, if we pick a different ratio, so for example we picked uh, 9 is to 6 for example, um, then I'm going to have d6, d7, d8 and d9 divisions. So d9 then by the time I come up 9 divisions I'm going to be at this point d Okay, and you'll always be on your last division, you'll be always at that point D. This is going to be D9 minus 1, okay, because my M is 9, so that's why I get D8. This is going to be 9 minus 2, which is M minus 2, which is where I get D7, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's what that terminology means. It, it takes a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around it, but once you do, that's this theorem then that's your that's the hardest part to understand in this theorem okay so that's until you get to d then how do we label the parts after d okay well you've m divisions here and you've n divisions up here so you see that point a how many divisions would you have that stage you'd have m plus n okay Remember we had 9 is to 6 and in the last example I wrote down you'd have 9 divisions here, 6 divisions here, so you'd have 15 divisions in total. Okay, and that's explaining this second line here. So you can see from D then this is D plus 1 or um, M plus 1 which would be D10 in my example. We go up another one, D11, all the way until you're at the very top, which is M plus N, like I said in my one, D15. And at that stage, you're at the very top of the triangle, so you're at that point A at the top. Okay, and then the note you need here, B to D1, D1 to D2, D2 to D3, etc., are all equal in length. Okay, so these are the main heart of this proof. These three lines here start off with line T, 
cut AB and the ratio M is to N at D. There's equally spaced points and try and be able to label all of your divisions in terms of M and N and bring in D. And keep going then up all the way until you get to A. Okay, and then just put down the note that the segments are equal in length. Okay, so there's that note then again. The segments are equal in length. So what you do then is you actually, we just drew in the dots in the last part. You draw the lines across to the other side, across to AC. And at all times, they are parallel with BC. Okay, or T, because they're parallel to each other. Okay, so draw the lines D1 to E1, uh, D2 to E2, D3 to E3, so on and so forth. And previously you had D going to E anyway, that one was already there. And then you continue on all the way up. Parallel to BC with all the E points on the line AC. So draw in those lines across. Okay, that's where we are there. Um, hence C to E1. So now I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. C to E1, E1 to E2, E2 to E3 have the same length. And they have to have the same length because B to D1, D1 to D2 were equal in length. And if we draw parallel lines straight across, then of course C to E1, E1 to E2, etc. has to have the same length. Okay, um, and that's what you proved from theorem 11. So you can see you go back to the previous theorems to prove the next one. And then your conclusion, hence E divides AC in the same ratio M is to N and line T cuts AC in the ratio M is to N. Okay, so E divides that line in the ratio M is to N and line T cuts AC in the ratio M is to N. So basically, you're stating back the proof what you wrote in the two proof. So your conclusion to any theorem should always reference back what you put down into proof. And then you have quite easily done to show your examiner you have it proven. So just to conclude, there aren't too many lines to this proof. You break your side AB into divisions. You're not going to know what M and N is, so you can choose whatever number of divisions you want for the purpose of this proof. You state that they're equally spaced and you start labeling them in terms of M and N and B, D and A. OK, and that's those two lines there, which in my opinion are the two hard lines. You state the fact that they're equal in length, there's the same gap between each point. You draw your parallel lines across. You label all of these in terms of E. A, E and C. You state that these have the same length and you can do that because of theorem 11. And then you state your conclusion. Hence E divides AC in the ratio M is to N and therefore line T cuts AC in the ratio M is to N. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.